Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Neha Patni. In this video, we'll discuss about Lambert Beer Law. In some of the videos previously, we would be discussing about ultraviolet spectroscopy in detail. And this Lambert Beer Law is of utmost importance in ultraviolet spectroscopy. Basically, there are two absorption laws that govern the total absorption of light by the molecule. So, and these two laws are Lambert's law and Beer's law. So, we'll discuss uh, those laws one by one. Now, if you see Lambert's law, the first one is obviously because of Mr. Lambert. So, the name here is Lambert's law. Now, it is about ultraviolet spectroscopy and it is all about interaction of matter with light. So, here, when a beam of monochromatic radiation is passed through a homogeneous absorbing solution, so now if you can uh, see here, if I take a cuvette, now this is a cuvette, this glass tube, which you can see here in the picture as well, these are known as cuvettes and they are nothing but a cylinder, which uh, could be of plastic and uh, quartz and glass also. Normally quartz is used or a glass is used. Uh, now this cuvette is transparent on two sides and opaque on two sides. Now from if here I want to pass the light, then these two sides has to be transparent and these two sides would be opaque. So this is how a cuvette looks like. Now here in the cuvette, obviously we need to fill the sample solution for which we are just finding out the absorbance. So in the cuvette, we need to fill the solution and we are supposed to pass the light. Now this light could be of this intensity. So let's say I0 is the intensity of this incident light. And that light has to be monochromatic in nature. That means it has to have a single wavelength. The wavelength of a particular radiation is fixed. So here we need to see that which wavelength of the light is absorbed by these particles. That would be the absorbance of the particle at particular wavelength. That is why we need to allow a monochromatic light to pass through it. Pass through a homogeneous. Definitely it has to be homogeneous. It cannot be hetero. I guess you remember that homo means same. So the face should remain same. If it is hetero, then you may find that there are certain particles present in the cuvet. And if the solution, it happens when, if the solution is colloidal or is suspended. So now if the particles are present in it, obviously they are going to hinder or they are going to scatter the light or they are going to interact with that light. So in that case, our estimation would go wrong. What we want to know is if we plot absorbance versus wavelength, the graph should come like this, right? And that means a particular wavelength of the light is absorbed let's say from 200 to 400 nanometer i am plotting a graph and if at somewhere around 310 this particular peak i observed that means the light of 310 nanometer is absorbed by the particular sample but if impurities are present if it is hetero they may also interact and they may also interfere with this kind of graph so you may get this kind of impurities in between and then you will get this graph and then maybe like this so basically what i want is a particular sample and its absorbance so it needs to be extremely clean now uh, coming to uh, the mathematical relation what lambert has said I'm just uh, erasing these particles because right now uh, we are talking about only a homogeneous solution. So now if the homogeneous solution is there and I'm allowing the light to pass through it, what happens is there'll be some decrease in the intensity of radiation. What I want to say is the radiation which is coming out of it, which you call it as a transmitted light obviously has a different intensity than that of incident light. Probably this would be the case that your incident light intensity is higher than that of transmitted because some of the amount of the light is absorbed and that is what I want to know. How much light is absorbed? So by looking into the transmitted light, we could easily find out how much is absorbed. So this would go to detector 
and detector will show you the plot of absorbance versus wavelength so that means there has to be decrease in the intensity of radiation now the lambert says that this uh, particular decrease in the intensity of radiation which you may call it as absorbance obviously because whatever decrease has happened here is obviously because of the light is getting absorbed by the particle the particle is absorbing that light and it is getting excited to the some state and that is how it is interacting with the matter and that interaction is nothing but absorbance here so this absorbance is directly proportional to the thickness of the solution so let's say the thickness is l as mentioned here l thickness is nothing but the path length of the cuvet so if it is l written here uh, normally what happens is uh, the cuvet is 1 cm the l of cuvet is 1 cm you can see here all of the cubits are uh, similar so now this absorbance would be proportional to the path length or thickness of the solution as per lambert's and now if you remove this proportionality constant and then you introduce one constant here it would be epsilon epsilon is molar absorption coefficient and obviously it is the value of how much a particular or how well a particular uh, substance is absorbing the radiation so as per lambert this absorbance is proportional to the path length now let me describe it again if uh, i take a cubit of uh, let's say the length is 1 cm and this l1 basically is now 1 cm and i take one more cubit uh let's say it is 3 cm so you can see the difference uh, obviously it is the length is increased of the cuvette here in the picture i would like to say like let's say it is 1 cm or you may call this one you may see the thickness is uh, greater right so what i want to say here is if i take a cuvette whose path length is more and one has less then what effect does it make on the absorbance as per lambert it has to be proportional right so if i say l2 is greater that means absorbance of l2 would be greater now how can you say that by looking to the particles present in the cuvette when i increase the path length definitely the number of particles here are increased and that is how the absorbance is increased so we may safely say that as per lambert's the absorbance is proportional to the path length of the solution or the thickness of the solution going to the next one beer said that if you keep the same thing like when a beam of monochromatic radiation is passed means the wavelength is fixed you are passing it through the solution of absorbing substance again the solution would be homogeneous but here he says that the rate of decrease in the intensity which you can call it as an absorbance is proportional to the the thickness was there with the right the thickness was there uh, with lambert he said along with that it is proportional to like concentration so there is one more term now which is known as concentration and again if i say it is proportional to concentration if i want to introduce a constant factor it would be epsilon again so the concentration you can represent in terms of mole per liter and epsilon is again molar absorption coefficient or molar absorptivity now let us go in detail just to explain it one more time if i take a blank cuvette now what i'm doing is i'm just making all of the path lengths constant so i'm not varying right all of them are having same path length if you can observe here all of them are having the same path length right now if you observe here these like if you can see here these are same now you tell me what do you think here the difference lies in the concentration now if you can see c1 c2 and c3 so i have taken the length constant but what i'm varying is the concentration now here if you look in both of the cuvettes this is uh, certainly you know uh, less uh, colored or you may call it as light color and then you may call it as a dark color this one is a dark color this one is a light color now do you understand what i'm talking about is concentration and i think you remember that whenever we prepare a solution it has to be solute it has to be a solvent and they both constitutes a solution right so now when the solution is dilute the amount of solvent is more when the solution is concentrated amount of solute is more 
So now when I am saying here that it is concentrated solution. Now what do you think? Amount of solute is more. Right. So now you observe here the number of particles here are increasing. And it is almost the similar funda that if you increase the concentration, number of particles are increasing. So if the absorbance here is in this nature, I can again say that A3 obviously would be the highest absorbance because it is proportional to the concentration as per Mr. Beer. Going to the final derivation, Lambert Beer's law. Both of the expressions, if you can combine together, will get the final expression that the if you are allowed to pass a monochromatic radiation through a homogeneous solution, the decrease in intensity of radiation, which is absorbance, would be directly proportional to both concentration and path length. If you remember, path length was given by Lambert's and concentration was given by Beer's. And epsilon is nothing but a constant. This just gives you uh, how well a particular uh, substance is absorbing the radiation. That's the, that, that is the factor. Like how intense is the absorption. So it is a molar absorption coefficient or you may call it as molar absorptivity or molar extension coefficient. So this is the derivation. I mean the expression. Now if I want to derive a particular uh, derivation, what I can do is uh, di by dx is proportional to ci. What do I mean by that? Like if you have a cuvette here, right? So let's say this one is a cuvette here. So bear with uh, my drawing please. I am not that well versed with uh, this stylus but I am just trying my level best. So now if this is the area I am talking about. So let's say this would be dx, right? And like this particular area, I am allowing the photon to pass through it. So the intensity for particular area would be di. So what we are trying to say is, this is an infinitely small, uh, you can say area. And I have to integrate it to get the final uh, transmitted light from here, which is nothing but this. I am just giving the i zero. So what we can say is, at that particular area, the rate of uh, this decrease of intensity of radiation with respect to thickness of the medium, that would be proportional to the concentration, that what concentration is kept and the intensity, like what intensity it is getting. So don't uh, get confused to where is that L factor. We are going to derive it. The L has not reached yet. Earlier, it would be proportional to intensity only. Let me tell you how. See, this much is the portion which is dx. Now, one more portion would be there. Then this portion would be there. And this portion would be there. Now, overall the path length is L. Right? I am talking about a small area. Now let's say uh, you are allowing uh, around 40 photons to pass through it. So the first area is actually getting exposed to 40 photons. Now it is going to absorb as per the concentration. It is going to absorb some photons. So the photon go to the next area. What do you think? Is it going to have 40? No. If it absorbs 10, 30 photons are left. So for that particular dx, the rate of decrease of intensity is proportional to concentration. First of all, how much is the concentration? And second, intensity. How much intensity of photon is falling on it? Because the intensity is not same. Here it is getting 40 photons. Here it is getting 30 photons. And it will decrease like this. So that decrease would be proportional to this. I hope you get this point. Secondly, you need to be very clear between intensity and energy. I am not saying that energy is decreasing, right? Energy is fixed. I guess you remember E is equal to Hc by lambda. Now when I am asking a monochromatic radiation to pass, that directly means that I have fixed energy. So the energy here is not going to change. It is fixed. What is going to change is intensity. The number of photons is striking to a particular area. So now... Uh, Going to uh, the derivation, okay, before going to this, uh, let me introduce a slide here 
so that I can uh, discuss more in detail of the derivation. Uh, okay, so let me include a blank slide here and then one more blank slide I need. Okay, so now going to the derivation. I want to explain it to you in detail. So what were we up to was rate of decrease of intensity was proportional to concentration and intensity, right? So now th since decrease is there, I have uh, kept a minus here. Now very quickly, I can write this KCI. Obviously, I have removed this and I have introduced a constant factor here and the negative comes here. So now if a little shifting I do, I can represent it as di by i is equal to minus k c dx. I hope you understand this. Now this one was very infinite smelly uh, area, right? What I want to do is I need to integrate it. I want to know for the full area. So like if I integrate it with respect to my intensity and here it was a path length. So, what I can write here is this. So, I guess if you solve this, you will be able to get this log minus k, c and l. Now, if I simply uh, want to remove the particular uh, alpha portion, I can write like this and that is equal to this. Now if I want to change it to base 10, we can easily write 2.303 log of i0 by i and that is equal to alpha Cl or like sorry uh, this would be k. Uh, we have used k. So, what we have used here is k, not uh, this, right? This one is also k. So, what I would like to say is uh, we can derive this finally, like in terms of k, if I want to write, I can uh, easily write 2.303 and then cl, then log base 10 i0 by i. And if you remember, this is a kind of first order rate equation of the kinetics. So, this k is nothing but that constant. But going to the final derivation, we are going to reach there like this. So, if I just can write 1 by Cl and then log base 10 I0 by I. Now we are almost there to reach to the final conclusion which Lambert Beers have said if I use a proportionality constant for this particular factor let's say I use epsilon I can write this statement again like this right and where epsilon is equal to k by 2.303 and epsilon I guess you remember it is extension coefficient or molar absorption coefficient or molar absorptivity. The unit could be here L mole per centimeter. So now going to ECL. Now if you can change like log 10 I naught by I and now since this is absorption, right? We are talking about absorption. So now since A is equal to ACL, epsilon CL, or we may have one more, which is log I0 by I. Now if you remember, this was the final statement of Lambert's Beer's law. So we have reached to the first derivation of Lambert's Beer's law. Epsilon proportional to concentration, uh, the absorbance proportional to length, overall it's equal to ECL. 
at the same time you may convert it into i equal to i base 10 10 to the power minus ecl or uh, in terms of if you can say i not e power ecl so if you just can convert you may write it like this also but remember this absorbance is log 10 i0 by i where i0 was incident light if you remember and i was the transmitted light now i'm coming to transmittance absorbance we have done which is this now i'm going to transmittance if you remember if in a qubit you are allowing a line to pass and it is coming outside with a path length of l this i is the transmitted light now when i say 20 percent of the light is transmitting that directly means 80 percent is getting absorbed so the transmittance would be here i over i zero that is what the main thing now if i take a log of this and if i change it to log like this now if you remember this is absorbance so in terms of absorbance i can simply write like log of transmittance is minus a or vice versa or in terms of again exponential form you may write like this so the another uh, function of wavelength could be transmittance and like molar absorptivity is there epsilon it's there right so we can sometimes convert it into terms of transmittance sometimes in terms of absorbance so you need to remember this uh, statement you need to remember this statement now going further to one more and last uh, derivation for uh, today like sometimes what happens is uh, you uh, can sometimes what happens uh, is like when uh, transmittance is asked now normally uh, they ask in terms of absorbance but in some of the higher studies you will find this kind of term also which is transmittance and that is percentage so i'll tell you how to calculate it in terms of percentage also so transmittance is nothing but i over i naught so if i want to take a percentage I may any time write it like this. I think you agree with me. And at the same time, uh, I can you know change that uh, statement to like I by I naught is equal to percentage transmittance by 100. Wherein if you remember like log T was minus A. From the last slide you can easily remember. And I said vice versa so you may call it as like absorbance is equal to minus log of t now uh, i may write it like t as uh, you know i by i zero so at the outset you can again rewrite it in terms of percentage transmittance from here so if i write it like this absorbance is equal to this and if you solve this equation you may get to another one which is nothing but this one right and i can finally reach to the final conclusion this is what i would like you to know this is also an important equation which we can use any time for further calculation absorbance with respect to percentage transmittance so i hope you remember what we have done so far uh, we were on to lambert's beer's law and i said that lambert says that this intensity this uh, light gets decreased and we want to know that decrease in the intensity and that is known as absorbance so as per lambert it is proportional to the length and then beer said ki it is proportional to concentration as well and we combine both of the laws to say that the absorbance is proportional to concentration and length and then there is a factor which is also important which is molar absorption coefficient and then we started deriving the thing and we started with taking an infinitely small uh, area and we integrated it to the full area and just simply doing the calculation we reached to the first step which is epsilon is equal to e c 
and L, epsilon concentration and path length. And in terms of intensity of light, this is incident, this is transmittance. So log I0 by I. In terms of transmittance, you can say that the log of transmittance is negative of minus A. This equation is having very much relevance with respect to the finding out any particular concentration of a sample using the spectrum. So when we plot the spectrum versus uh, transmittance and uh, absorbance versus wavelength, it would be like this, right? But when in, ter in terms of uh, transmittance, it would be linear and like in terms of concentration, especially it would be linear and you will be able to find out the concentration. And the last uh, derivation I said that we can any time convert it into percentage transmittance and you can use this equation to find out if you know the absorbance, you can term it in terms of percentage transmittance. So thank you from my side. If you like this video, keep liking and sharing it and subscribe the channel. Thank you.